views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm talking to you today from rainy seattle here on hubbard radio kknw am 1150 you might be listening in connecticut new york or rhode island on AM 1230 WBLQ, somewhere across the United States on cable radio network or anywhere around the world on Transformation Talk Radio. You might be listening to this on the archives on ChristineUpchurch.com. But wherever you're listening from today, you're going to be so excited. We are going to have an unusual show. But before I tell you that, I'm going to first say hello to my better half here in the studio who allows you to hear these wonderful conversations, Mr. Benny Mathers. Hi, Benny. Hi. Good day, Christine. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you today? (sighs) That's what I needed. I needed to take a deep breath here. Yeah, we all need to have a little... uh, little extra breathing in mm-hmm. our lives. Well, especially for today, you've, you've mentioned a very unique show, and I think people should definitely tune in and listen to this. this is a very yeah. special show, I it should say. It is a say. special show. But before I get into that, I also wanted to mention, you know, Benny, mm-hmm. on my new website, um, I have some Did of the Did you archives. say new website? Yes. Congratulations. Maybe people should check it out. ChristineUpchurch.com. There we go. And I've got some featured shows and some of the archives, uh, archived radio shows, and so um, I've just been watching where people are coming from mm. to, to, to the radio show pages. And I just wanted to mention here, in the last just few days, we've had people from all across the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, Colombia, Malaysia, Germany, Sweden, Indonesia, Canada, Norway, Belgium, Singapore, Mexico, Croatia, the Netherlands, Italy, Argentina, Portugal, Brazil, Cyprus, India, Romania, Slovakia, France, Greece, and Ireland. Fantastic. So this is really an list. international show. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so great with the the internet these days. Do you have a giant map on the wall at home and you have a little pens? No, oh, no. That's... Look at you made it sound like oh but, no, no, no. But you like, let's do it. But I can actually look oh. at look at the Im- image on the computer. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's fun. That and it's, it's also fun when it looks like, you know, just a big clump over Europe and stuff and, you know, see if you're very places. You're very centralized there. So it's, it's, it's fun. And I, I welcome all of you from all over the world. And today is a very special day. Today, we're going to be talking about the perspective from the other side through the eyes of a 20-year-old young man who killed himself. And then began bringing his gifts of his perspective on life on the other side as well as life here to the world. And it's a, it's a really unique story. And we're going to be talking to two different people. First of all, his mother, Dr. Elisa Medhus. Um, she is an MD, has been for oh, many, many years, an internist. And she has been practicing medicine down in Houston, Texas. Texas is where I'm from originally, so... Um, but she's in Texas. I was in Fort Worth. Um, and she, her, her purpose is to help heal others. And not just the physical healing that doctors usually do, but the psychological and the spiritual healing. You know, after, after the death of her son, which is an incredibly tragic story, she felt that her son Eric was beginning to communicate with the family and started writing a blog about, um, you know, try, try, trying to process things associated with the exit of her son from human form. And she started hearing about um, how, how members of the, the blog community were starting to feel contact with him. And she started going from like this place of 
disbelief, like is there really life after death, to looking into the quantum physics, the science, explaining spirituality. And she began to open her mind to more. And there have been um, a couple of different channelers who've brought through the information from um, her son, Eric. And one of them is Kim Babcock, and she's here today as well. She's a psychic and a medium. She's been doing readings for about five years. She owns a small metaphysical shop in Ohio, and she also does healing work. And she believes that through God, she's able to communicate with spirits that walk in the white light, including Eric. And so we're going to be hearing from Eric's mom, Eric's current channel, and perhaps Eric himself. I'd like to welcome all three of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Glad to be here. You know, it's um, this is such an amazing story. And I, I know, um, Dr. Madhus, you've written several books. And you wrote a book about, you know, about letting go and, 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 and what it was like to deal with this and sort of open up to this more spiritual side. But the book I have in my hands is particularly fascinating to me because this was written by your son after he passed. It's called My Life After Death, A Memoir from Heaven by Eric Medhus with Elisa Medhus, MD. So, you know, this is a fascinating book. And I have to tell you, um, Dr. Medhus, I have two sons myself. I've got a 15-year-old and a 21-year-old. And I know the way they talk. And it's a very colorful language at times. Sometimes I'll have to say, don't you know we're in a restaurant? Um, but when I opened this book and I'm thinking, this is channeled material. What's it going to sound like? It sounds like a 20-year-old young man who's sitting across the table in the restaurant, you know, explaining what it's like to be on the other side. It is so genuine, and it gives me chills head to toe. This is so fascinating. How, first of all, before we get into the, the goodies within this book... I want to talk briefly about your experience, okay? You're a mom of five, and mm-hmm. this extremely tragic thing happened. Um, oh, gosh, I just can't tell you. There's nothing worse that can happen to a human being oh, yeah. than losing a child, and, you know, you just are going to be broken forever. Right, uh, right. But I can go into this later, but that book, transcribing his book, really healed me. You know, almost completely. Uh But yeah, it was really hard for me, Christine, because here I'm a doctor, so, you know, my whole life is all about science, and science teaches us that, you know, for something to be real, you have to perceive it with at least one of your senses or measure it with an instrument. And I couldn't do that when he was gone. And then on top of that, I was raised by two atheists. I mean, I'm talking about militant atheists. Uh Uh, My father's first words to me after Eric died was, oh, sorry, Elisa, but... Eric's going to turn to dust. But <gasps> oh, I know. How, well, how he horrible. doesn't have a way with words. But, <laughs> oh, dear. but uh, yeah, that that was crushing. Oh. But um, then three days after Eric's death, I get a call from this militant atheist, and he is panicky. He says that he was sitting in his chair reading, I don't know, I can't remember, a newspaper maybe, and he looks up, and there's Eric in front of him. Wow. And then Eric morphs into uh, a little boy version of himself uh-huh. and crawls up into my father's lap. Wow. And says in Spanish, because my father's from Spain, things come in threes. We never figured that one out. But huh. but uh, and then I thought, my gosh, if an atheist who is very proud of his atheism right. admits to this, there, there might be something to it. So that's when, like you said, I started getting into the quantum physics of consciousness, survival, near-death experiences, all that sort of thing. Right, right. Yeah, I, I can't imagine anything worse, um, as mm-hmm. a mom myself, I can't imagine anything worse in human form no. uh, than mm-hmm. something like this. And um, I know that um, he w- is a bright light in many ways and then ultimately, you know, felt very troubled. Have you been able to get to the perspective that he's had some purpose in, 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 in exiting at that time in that way? Yeah, you know, I asked him, why, why couldn't you just have waited until you're 80, 90 years old, you know? Mm-hmm. And he said he was just too miserable, but his purpose was he had a spiritual contract to come down, suffer immensely, mm-hmm. so that he could develop the skills he needed, the listening skills, the, the skills of compassion, and so on, to become a better spirit guide. And, and that's what he does now, uh, for the most part. Uh He said, apparently, spirit guides are pretty common. They're like taxi cabs in New York, so I think that's kind of funny. (laughs) But, 
but he's here to guide us, you know, confused humans mm-hmm. trying to live out the human experience. Right, right. And, and you know, we, we hear about those sorts of things, and sometimes information will get channeled from them. But what I find so fascinating about this book is Eric just talks not only about choosing to take his own life, but what it was like right after he died, how he was trying to come to completion in the various relationships, and then what it's been like on the other side. And he goes into great depth over his experience, as well as the role of the spirit guide that, that he's, he's fulfilling on the other side. Um, how, how was this information brought through? Uh, brought through uh, one of the other mediums, Jamie Butler. Uh-huh. Uh, and, you know, I just uh, recorded it and then transcribed it with my little clumsy fingers. I'm not a very good typist, but this is kind of my main role is just to be his secretary, to uh-huh. tell you the truth, and right. to provide him with some sort of platform to blog in order to do his work. Right. But I'm very proud of him. The book is just a, I don't know, a jaw-dropping page turner a lot of people uh some people on amazon uh, on the review say it's the best book they ever read not Uh just the best book of its kind they say they were really sad to get to the last page because it was over so i'm Uh really really proud uh, of what he's done eric i'm proud of you Mm. so kim um thanks for joining us here today my pleasure thank you for having me you know, I, I understand that um, you are now working as one of the mediums for Eric. Is Eric present? He is. <laughs> he sure is. He's here. Okay. It's funny because um, I've felt his presence in the last couple of days myself, and so it, it makes this show extra special. And um, one of the things that I actually love about the book is it's filled with the kinds of swear words that come out of boys that age. Um and we, we had to have a little talk, right, saying that um, we have to be careful because if, if there are any of these swear words that get onto the air, Benny over there has to, to dump 15 seconds. So it's really important that we get the information without the swear words. <laughs> Behave, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Behave, or I'm going to put you in timeout the minute I get there. I like that plan. I like that plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, no problem. And, and we're going to hear from Eric and hear more from Um, both Kim and Eric's mom, Dr. Medhus, when we return here in a few moments. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is a complete approach to wellness. Serenity Bliss offers integrated therapies for whole body health. From facials to massage, from laser skin treatments to herbal wellness, from chiropractic care to energy healing. We work with teens who want to put their best face forward, adults of all ages who want to maintain that youthful glow, and anyone who wants to enjoy vibrant well-being head to toe. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is bringing the European approach to restoring natural beauty and wellness here to the Seattle area. Located on the east side off the beaten path, yet just minutes from the freeway. If you'd like to experience the joy of relaxation, skincare excellence, and total wellness, then come experience your Serenity Bliss. To learn more or to schedule an appointment, visit SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. That's SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. Or call 206-229-0086. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. As a former research statistician, my scientific background is what many would call sensible. For more than a decade now, I have been working in the field of energy medicine, facilitating sessions and teaching around the world. People from the mainstream often ask me, 
How did a sensible woman like you end up working in such an alternative field? Implicit in their question is the underlying assumption that the field of subtle energy, such as energy healing and intuition, isn't sensible. But I believe it is very sensible. Even scientists are able to measure aspects of this. Approaching life from an energetic perspective brings us new opportunity for healing and transformation. And from a practical standpoint, even if you can't rationally explain how something works, if you experience a shift from it, then doesn't it make it pretty sensible? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Call the Oprah of radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Vasily is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. After I died and the makeup had dried, I went back to my place. No moon that night, but a heavenly light shone on my face. Still, I thought it was odd. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having a conversation today with Elisa Medhus and Kim Babcock, and um, through Kim, Eric Medhus. So, what prompted Eric and you, Elisa, to actually create this book and publish it? Well... Actually, it was Eric's idea. He wants to demystify death. You know, so many people are afraid of death because it's such an unknown. Nobody knows, you know, what it feels like and mm-hmm. what happens after you leave your body. And nobody even is sure, not everybody is sure that there is a life after death. It took me four years after Eric's death to really be absolutely 100% certain. Uh-huh. So, you know, a lot of people who have read the book say they're not uh, afraid of death anymore. Uh-huh. And I was fascinated by um, learning about what his experience was like, you know, after he shot himself and mm-hmm. watching, you know, what was going on around him. And then the, the part that really tugged at my heartstrings that was just so beautiful was his description of trying to come to closure with the various oh, the individuals. Yes. The, and, oh, and I tell you, Christine, transcribing that part about his death uh-huh. and all the details was just, it's so graphic and it was so hard for me okay. because there were details I didn't know at uh-huh. all and I kind of wish I didn't know now mm-hmm. but um and the goodbyes are so poignant um so after transcribing those two chapters I almost stopped writing the book I just you know right. but after that and after he visits his funeral and then crosses over it just becomes this glorious adventure and it becomes I don't know happy right Right. And and that's such a powerful message of, you know, the the power that we have in spiritual form when we're not living the illusion of being human. Mm. Um, so, Kim, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, I, I often will chat with people about um, where they want to go in the conversations, and I often do it on the break. But since you're actually bringing Eric through, and I want people to have an opportunity to, to hear that, uh what would Eric like to discuss today? Well, Eric is, um, he's very playful. I'll start off by saying that he's very interactive and very playful. And um, for Eric, nothing, generally nothing is off limits to discuss and talk about. Okay. Um, he, you know, most of, it seems the way that he communicates with me, most of his purpose and his intentions are to bring people to relief, relief um, of and, and from their fears. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those fears are, are so many different things. But Eric's purpose, um, you know, his wants and his intentions, I guess, are, he says, um, to help release people from the fears that tie them down. There's so many fears, whether it's the fear of, am I going to be accepted? And am, am I going to be judged in life? Sure. Am I going to be you know, adaptable when I move to this new location or 
you know, anything regarding the afterlife. He said, all, there's so many fears that are such an illusion, and I want to debunk those. He says, I want to get rid of the illusions that can trap humans in ways that I experienced it myself. So what is it about being on the other side that, that allows him to have that perspective? He says um, his want, his want to acquire the knowledge. Um, he says basically when you have a want or a need or a desire here, you ask for it, you can manifest it. Um, it's, it's all in the energy put behind the thought, uh-huh. he says. Um, and for me, he says, I want I want to help people through their experience, no matter what kind of help they need. And he says, so basically what they ask me, I do my best to ask that, access that information to help bring them, bring them to ease. I want people to live life with a little more ease. He says, I want people to unwind a little. <laughs> uh-huh. So what is it like being on the other side? He started laughing, and he says, spiritual. <laughs> but no, he says, um, it's, um, it's, it's complete truth and complete reality without illusions. He says, you understand um, everything as it, as it is, and you understand the truth of everything. He says, you have everything, and you see the value of, it, of everything. He says, it's sometimes being human, you can't, you can't see past what's at face value, but here you have that ability. He says it's complete freedom. Um, it's complete knowledge, he says. Like, could you, like you could probably understand the value in your suffering then. Right. He says, I do understand the value in my suffering, and I accept it. Um, he says, and I actually can have gratitude for it because what it's brought me to in understanding who I am, because ultimately that higher understanding of myself has brought me closer to God's source. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. So, in this form on the other side, you know, after he let go of his physical body, um, does Eric still have any sort of body, so to speak? He says, well, not one that you can touch with your hand and have the touch sensation. Um, He says, I still have um, an energy. I still have existence. Just the makeup is different. You have mass. You have um, hard substance to you. He mm-hmm. says, I, I don't have that. I can manifest it. It's hard. Mm-hmm. He says, it takes a lot of focus, a lot of intention. But he says, all of us here, how we encounter each other is, he says, you use your eyes to recognize and to um, your eyes give you all kinds of feedback about your environment. He uh-huh. says, for us, it's feeling. We use what we feel. We know who we're with based on the way we feel. Uh-huh. So it's, it's more energetic than, say, visual or, or, or like the physical senses. He says, absolutely, it's all energetic. And he said, the physical senses are, um, they're not needed for us here. Uh-huh. So... You know, it sounds like, in some sense, he is still Eric, an individual on the other side. Um, does he experience individuality there, or is it something different than, you know, his experience in human form? Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, he says, um, he says you can, you do, you still have individuality here, but it's so much different because in the human. In the human experience, uh-huh. um, indiv- individuality comes with the heavier human emotions, the need to the need to prove, the need to support and have support. He says, so here we have our own individuality, and that's our makeup. That's our our vibration is unique. My uh-huh. vibration is unique to Eric, and others around me, it, theirs is unique to them. But it's all in a higher existence. It's all in a higher He says, basically, we're all just a smaller piece of a large pie. Mm -hmm. So we have our individuality, but there's less need to prove it here. And then he goes, that opens up the whole can of worms about ego. Uh Uh-huh. He Mm. says, it 
relates to ego and humans and needing to have that individuality, and we don't have that that sense of need to prove it here. Uh huh. Which totally changes the dynamic between the individual, so to speak. Yeah, he says it's a higher form of acceptance, um, accepting self and who's around you. Um, you understand that everybody's different and individual, um, and it's just accepted. Whereas the human experience, it has you feel the need to prove it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Elisa, mm-hmm. have you felt Eric? Um, sort of outside of the the others who've been bringing him through? Oh, goodness, yes. I've had lots of experiences. In fact, you know, he said it's very difficult for him to lower his vibration so that he sort of gets into the, the visible range uh-huh. of the big electromagnetic spectrum of energy. Right. And, uh, but there have been several times where he has. I remember the, one of the first times was, oh, I must have been maybe a month or two after he died, uh-huh. I went to bed, and before I could even totally lay down, there was Eric uh, hopping from the left foot of my bed to the right, back and forth, and it looked like he didn't know I was there. Oh, my and then goodness. my sister, my deceased sister Denise, uh-huh. uh, was sitting on the left foot of the bed, grinning at him, like, oh, you're being such a fool. <laughs> and I just couldn't believe it, because, oh. you know, I, at that point, I really did not believe it. Right. No, totally. I I was still still quite skeptic, uh-huh. and I just kept watching him go back and forth. Then he turned his head toward me and looked shocked and said, "Mom, you can see me." And then he falls into my arms and oh. we hug. Oh. Christine, I really felt that hug. There was a physicality to it that was just amazing. It was just, unfortunately, it was just, uh, you know, too short. Sure, sure. That's absolutely beautiful. But uh, I can tell when he's around, he'll give me really intense, gosh, it's uh, just bordering on painful goosebumps on whatever part his energetic field is, is touching, uh-huh. whether it's my upper leg or my scalp or, or whatever. Or he'll manifest uh, airsoft BBs that will appear at the ceiling and drop to the floor, <laughs> even though we don't have any we don't have any airsoft BBs in our house. But he'll just create them, and you know, he'll turn on water faucets. Uh-huh. Not just a little bit, but all the way. And we watch as the handle turns. Um, wow. He will turn on unplugged appliances. Uh-huh. It's just, you know, some not-so-subtle signs. It's right. just absolutely amazing. <laughs> so so the appliances aren't plugged in, but he'll somehow generate enough energy to turn the appliance on. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It, he sounds very skilled on the other side. Well, he's had a lot of practice, and I think he gets a lot of energy from the love from all the blog members. I mean, the uh-huh. blog members just adore him. And I, I, I don't know, Eric, does that help you? It does. And it, it's his ability to move things and manifest things and get your attention, Mom. He mm-hmm. says partially that's based on your energy, um, but also um, my intentions, what I want. Um, he says, so he says, don't fail to acknowledge the free will that exists here. If I want to manifest something if I want to create, show you something, get, get your attention in any way. Um, I have been more diligent than others to learn mm-hmm. that process, to understand the works of energy, he says. Yeah, thank you, sweetie, because it really means a lot to me. We're going to have to go to another quick break, but um, more about my life after death, a memoir from heaven when we return here on the Christine Epchurch Show. Another day is gone I'm still all alone How could this be? You're not here with me You never said goodbye Someone told me What is a master soul gardener? With Nomi Bahar, you can be one too. Her revolutionary Gates of Power method is a comprehensive program that addresses every aspect of yourself and gives you the tools to tend to the seeds of your soul's garden. Let Nomi guide you through and beyond what's holding you back and help you embrace the life you've always dreamed of. To learn more about upcoming classes and workshops, visit gatesofpower.com today. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. I'm Peggy Snow with another Stellar Reflections Minute. Presence, or what we think of as being fully in the moment, is a key element in the process of healing work. As a practitioner facilitating a session, genuine presence takes us out of our heads where we tend to decide what is and maybe what should be for the client and moves us into direct experience where we're available to witness the person in their wholeness. In this receptive realm, our senses are heightened and expanded, allowing us to perceive what's seeking to unfold and to interact in the moment. There's something profoundly powerful that happens when healing is approached in this simple, pure way. Balance can be restored and healing can take place on multiple levels. If you'd like more information about the services we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. What if we really didn't have to die to go to heaven? Are you curious about the afterlife or rebirth? The highly anticipated new book from author Dr. Susan Allison, You Don't Have to Die to Go to Heaven, is available now. Find out how to find guidance and healing in the spirit realms. Order the book today and put it on your must-read list for 2016. Visit DrSusanAllison.com to learn more. Welcome back to the Kristen Eptridge Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having an interesting conversation with, it seems like two people, but there's actually a third person here too, apparently, um, Eric Medhus. And we are talking about life on the other side from the perspective of this 20-year-old who passed several years ago and who is working as a spirit guide. Now, I've got a question for Eric. Kim. Sure. Um, so, you know, he, he, he had certain issues, but he was also a bright light in the many ways, and he passed over. Does he just stay as the same person in terms of the, the development you know, stage he was at, or does he continue to mature and, and, and change on the other side? He says, um, he's thanking you for your question. Um, he says there's so much information here that we have access to and that information becomes a part of you he says for me myself I can merge with whatever information and and dynamics I want for myself Uh so there's there's no limit to my ability to grow to learn to understand and and uh, convey that to you Um, he says I'm not limited in any way, shape, and form, in my growth and in my development, mm-hmm. that's part of the physical experience. He says. So um, he says there's no possible way that I can be stuck in my learning and in my development. Rather, I have merged and continue to merge with information that I want to be a part of me. Um, that's why he says that's who I am as a guide. Uh-huh. He says for me, I'm continually seeking new ways 
to talk with people, to work with people. I'm continually seeking uh, new ways to be interactive, and the human experience is what causes those those barriers. Um, mm. Individuals, uh, physical people, have those limitations. He says that's the difference. I, I don't have the limitations that you do. Uh-huh. Is it possible for us to to shift in in one way or another? so that we release some of these limitations while still in human form to access some of the deep knowledge that clearly is coming through in this book? He says it it is absolutely possible, but the first thing, he says the first thing in that quest is to realize that the quest is within you. It's not on the outside. Uh He says people often think they have to read books and learn skills and new traits, Uh but rather it's a a vibrational... um, tuning fork inside of you that you just have to ring out, he says. Uh, Getting that vibration loud enough within you basically to align and hear us, see us, and access the information that's all around you. Okay, and, uh, you know, uh, talking about vibration is is right up my alley um, as an energy healer and and talking about change in vibration. Um, How do we get ourselves into that vibration so that we are better connected with this ethereal realm that clearly, Kim, you're dealing with right now and, um, you know, some of us access on a regular basis. But it would be great to know how we connect with that vibrationally. He says um, a few things, a few steps that you can do is to know that you have to surrender to everything around you. Mm. Um, Surrender to it, but also... Um, isolate from it it's kind of how he makes me feel energetically sometimes uh-huh. he speaks with words and sometimes it's with energy Right. Um, so he makes me feel like uh, he says his energy um, your energy is not attached to anything he goes well it can be but that's where you have to learn to let go of those attachments uh-huh. and really um, focus centralize your energy within yourself mm-hmm. um, he says to create that vibrational shift so that you he says so that you can have one foot on either side of the veil uh-huh that makes sense so elisa one of the one of the beautiful things in this book was um, during the stage when he talks about going through his life review, and Eric was talking about how you know he he was actually experiencing things. And he, he talks about the beautiful connection that you two have. And I think at some point he said, you're his favorite flavor or something like that. I know. Uh, when he was talking about everybody is an ice cream cone or something uh-huh. like that. And, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things I found interesting was his different perspective about the people who had treated him poorly. Do you remember that part of the book where, where he was? Yeah. He had that sure. shift in perspective from the other side. Yeah, during the life review, you not only, you know, you go from before your birth even sometimes until the moment of your death, that's what he did in his case, uh-huh. and you you look at, just in a flash, everybody who has interacted with you throughout your lifetime. You even know how many times they swallowed or blinked. It's very, very detailed, apparently. Huh. Okay. And, you know, if somebody was mean to him, he would be able to see from their perspective, visually, sensorily, emotionally. Um, so you're able to put yourself in the other person's shoes and your own shoes. Uh-huh. Um, so you you can learn from that. And the same thing when he was a jerk to somebody, you know? Right, You right. can see how they reacted emotionally, physically, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's a very good learning tool. And there's not really any judgment, like, oh, God, I shouldn't have done that. Uh-huh. It's like, wow, okay, good. This information will help me evolve. Right, right. And I think you talked about a specific case where one of his peers had treated him badly, and then he realized that, that this boy was also abused, and, and he was actually just sort of acting out you know, what had been acted out to him and, and sort of passing it along, which you know, I think that's a brilliant perspective. It would be wonderful if we could have that kind of lack of judgment or you know, different mm-hmm. perspective. Uh, when dealing with people in this reality. And and speaking of judgment, you talked about the lack of judgment. I know in our society, at least, 
there's a whole lot of judgment about taking your own life. And I think that mm-hmm. we're far more compassionate about young people who do that because it's, it can be such a troubling age and stuff. But um, sometimes there, there is judgment. Did Eric feel any kind of judgment associated with um, exiting in that way at that time? Well, yeah, he was afraid he was going to get in trouble. Uh huh. First of all, he was really afraid uh, about what would happen when we found his body. Right. Because, you know, he, he, he didn't think about that when he pulled yeah. the trigger. Yeah. So it was quite upsetting to him. And then when he crossed over and met these guides, he, he was afraid that he was going to get in trouble because mm-hmm. it is right. considered taboo. But there was no uh, judgment. And uh, his main, well, I'll call her a therapist, Kali, mm-hmm. who worked with him afterwards and helped him deal, process through all this, said that a death is a death is a death. It doesn't make any difference how you exit it, whether it's by your own hand or not. And uh-huh. in his case, it was a, you know, a spiritual contract anyway. Right, right. Which means that, um, you know, the fact that you two are so close that it, it had to be a spiritual contract with you as well. And, and what a brave thing to sign up for, Elisa. God, I wish I could have just read the memo, man. I'm <laughs> oh, so... God. I, I, God. I, I know. It's just... It's horrific yeah. and heart wrenching, and um, you know, and on some level, I can't even imagine it. And yet, but I'm so glad he's happy, though. You know, mm-hmm. finally. I mean, I would much rather him have stayed if I could have just found a way to help him become happy, uh-huh. and, and and not be having such a positive effect on on so many people. I know that sounds so selfish, but it's really an honest truth. Uh-huh. But it was not meant to happen, and bipolar disease is often a terminal one. And you know, in him, in his case. It was. Mm-hmm. And look at the important role he's showing up for now. Mm-hmm. We have to go to another quick break, but um, more with Elisa Medhus and Kim ba- Babcock and, of course, Eric Medhus as well when we return here on the Christine Eptrud Show. We all seem to have something in our lives that we would like to shift, and there are a myriad of ways to implement change. But many times we try even several approaches and still don't get what we want. Why is that? Well, as it turns out, there are universal principles governing change that you probably haven't heard about before, principles which determine whether or not you are successful in getting what you want. Follow these principles and you get positive, lasting change. Ignore them and you remain stuck. So if you are struggling in some area of your life, then you are missing an essential ingredient in your recipe for change. Want to learn the key to success? Please join me, Christine Upchurch, on February 15th at the Women of Wisdom Conference in Seattle to learn the vibration of change. Empower yourself in a new way to create the changes you desire. For more information, visit christineupchurch.com. That's christineupchurch.com. Or call 425-999-9836. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you're ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns designed specifically to support you on your journey. 
The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back to the Christy Napchurch Show here in KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. We are talking today about the, this wonderful book called My Life After Death, a memoir from heaven by Eric Medhus and his mother, Dr. Elisa Medhus. Now, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, my mind is boggled by some of the bigger pictures, you know, relating to reality, not just like the you know, our, our consciousness before and after death, I mean, before birth and after death, but this concept of reincarnation, time not existing. Um, I'm curious, Kim, if you can ask Eric about reincarnation. What's his perspective on it? Has he, re- has he had other lives? Is he planning on having future lives? And will it interfere with the here and now of his actually serving as a spirit guide? He says, um, he kind of laughed, and the first thing he answered was, um, will I reincarnate again? He says, I will, but not anytime soon. (laughs) (laughs) He says, but with that, um, he says, to answer one of your questions, um, if I do reincarnate again, he says, it depends on, um, as far as will it affect me, Eric, um, from the spiritual world, Uh if I decide to reincarnate, he says, it depends on where I put my awareness, uh-huh. where I, how I divide up my consciousness. He says, uh-huh. reincarnation is still widely looked at as a linear thing. He says it's a, it's a parallel thing, people, it's right. not linear. He says, yeah. so understanding it um, to be coexisting with you right now, but uh-huh. it's can you connect to and merge to that existence? He says, um, so think of reincarnation as not past or future, but mm-hmm. always currently existing around you, and it's just a matter of connecting your awareness to it, basically to understand it. Mm-hmm. So as a spirit, as a soul, um, how do we decide what it is we're going to be focusing on? He says, are you talking about when you're walking on the earth, when you're in physical? I'm talking about, like, sort of on a soul level. Like, he he talked about, you know, where he's going to put his energy is focusing on this other life going on simultaneously, you know, these these parallel existences. How how do we choose what it is we're going to put our energy into and focus on? He says, he goes, oh, that's easy. (laughs) He says, well, it depends on, he goes, that's where that that fun free will factor comes in. Uh Uh-huh. Um, you have the free will to decide that and decide um, what you need, what you want most. Um, so each experience, each different um, life experience is going to give you different information, different lessons. So mm-hmm. if it's that I need to learn more about um, self-love or mm-hmm. compassion, well, I see and understand that this incarnation was all about that, so I'm going to connect my consciousness there. Mm-hmm. He says it's, it's the the free will you have um, to basically connect to and decide what information you want to be a part of. And he's talking more about like life, uh-huh. like what life, what existence, what experience you want to be a part of. Right. So, as a spirit guide, does he have relationships with with other spirit guides, other energies, so to speak? He says absolutely. There's. There's so many here. He says it's limitless. He says, um, again, some relationships are permanent. He says some are temporary, and it's all dependent upon the information you're seeking. If you want to go learn about something or um, experience something new, you can have guides that take you to that and take you through that experience. Mm -hmm. He says, so, 
um, it's all about your needs and your wants. He goes, and that's the great thing about, he goes, a lot of people don't believe that you have free will here and that you have free will on this side, but how could we continue to evolve if we didn't? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I haven't had an opportunity yet to just give people a flavor of the book, and there's just a couple of sentences here I'd love to read just so you can get a, a, a sense of the kind of wisdom the kind of perspective you can get, but also the voice of Eric, which is just, you know, so much like a, a 20-year-old, year old, 20-year-old young man in some sense. It's just like the senses, emotions are different here. I can't hold on to negative emotions. I've actually tried, maybe just because I was so used to it, but it takes too much effort. It's like trying to hold on to slippery dishes in the sink with big-ass awkward dishwashing gloves on. I just love the descriptions here. And, you know, I have to ask you, Elisa, as his mother, I know that you had, you know, somebody channeling this information in and you were transcribing it. Does this voice sound like the voice of your son? Oh, gosh, yes. And I will let everybody know that he didn't get this from me. Okay? (laughs) No? Not all of it anyway. Not all of it. But, oh, gosh, yes, 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 and double yes. Oh, Uh it's, it's, it's him. Right. So, I know his energy. It's yeah, and I just I just love the way he puts things and it just reminds me of my own boys and um I, I so appreciate that. But it also makes me realize, you know, he, he he left at this particular age and I think twenty is a really vulnerable age for a variety of reasons, whether you have mm. bipolar or not. Um so does as a spirit guide now does Eric like to focus on any particular age group or type of of you know person or is he sort of you know helping many in of different age groups he says well don't think of it as age group he says I, I'm not limited to age groups I like to help everybody but he says I do focus on people that had the very similar struggles like me mm-hmm. he says and that can span many age groups he says adults just get much better at hiding it Oh, nice one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things I'm fascinated by, I mean, I, I know that, Elisa, you've talked about, you know, your various um, senses, you know, your five senses being aware of Eric. Um, I know that there are many cases when, or some cases, when you've been doing an interview or doing something, you know, recording something, and Eric's voice shows up. And in fact, I've got something by uh, Richard Martini where he was actually analyzing this. So do sometimes people on on some level actually hear Eric's voice come through on these recordings? Yeah. uh, One of the most uh, definitive ones, I think, was well, the one that that first got me to that 100% sure uh, point was a recorded session that somebody for the blog uh, said, hey, there's there's a voice on here. Uh-huh. And the session was done like a year and a half earlier. Right. So I thought, well, there's no way because it was just me and Jamie, so I don't know, it can't be. Uh-huh. But anyway, of course, I listened to the timestamp, and yep, there was Eric's voice. I mean, a wow. mom knows the voice of her yeah. own kid. He had this way, for example, of saying breakfast like a little kid, breakfast. Uh-huh. And I heard his, his verbal tick and everything. And that's the one we got analyzed. And Richard Martini, uh, you know, put it through the analysis and said it can't be a human voice because there was no no voice signature, and there were other elements that uh-huh. that uh, made him decide that it was not a human voice. Now, most recently, during a radio show, uh, the host called me afterwards and said, "Look, I listened to the recording, and there's this person talking uh-huh. loudly, right? And we didn't hear it live." And so I listened, and yep, there was Eric saying really loudly. I mean, really l- much louder than our voices the word minion and then right after that jamie the medium said oh he's calling them minions so it's all documented on our youtube channel the channeling eric youtube channel we have all these evps they're called caught on uh, on different recordings it's really fascinating so what does that stand for what does that that acronym stand for oh uh electronic voice phenomena okay okay and how can people find their way to your website and your YouTube channel? Well, they just have to look up Channeling Eric under the YouTube uh, search bar. And then and, and, as far and as the blog... E-R-I-K. Is, yes. Eric with a K, yes. Right. And then the blog is channelingericwithak.com. Uh-huh. 
And I also want to say I'm very excited that Eric decided he wants a multi-city tour. So we are going, Eric and Kim and uh, some other people are going on tour. First city is in June in Denver. Then we're going to New York City, Chicago. Uh, I can't remember the order, but Sedona, Air, uh, Orlando, Vancouver, uh-huh. which is close to you. Right. Um, right. And San Diego and Austin. That is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's going to give Eric a lot more access to uh, many more people physically. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And he can also yeah. probably swear more in person there than on the air. <laughs> oh, he does, and I don't try to filter it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, as I said before, as a mother of, you know, a 15-year-old and a 21-year-old, I, I absolutely appreciate it, and I, I accept that fully. You know, it has been a joy to talk to both of you as well as to Eric, and I want to thank you for being here. Well, thank, thank you for, you having, for having, us. having us. It's been wonderful. And, and you know, Elisa, I just have such deep respect for you know, as, from one mom to another for doing what you've done to bring this information forward, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you for that. And thank you, Eric, wherever you are. And thanks for joining us here today. Hope to talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www. Stellarreflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.transformationtalkradio.com.